Welcome back to the Hair Cafe Cinematic Universe, Hair Loss Witchers. Remember, a finasteride a day keeps the hair transplant doctor away. So recently, the internets have been abuzz with a new hair loss treatment known as AMP303. We'll just call it AMP303 from now on. In fact, the company that makes AMP303, Amplifica, is calling it a new hope for hair loss treatments. And based on the data that I have seen so far, that may not be really much of an embellishment at this point. AMP303 could very well be the real deal. So, what is AMP303 and what were the results of this new study? First of all, the company website is not very helpful at all. According to the website, quote, AMP303 is a proprietary, innovative formulation specifically engineered for intradermal injection to target androgenetic alopecia, unquote. Digging deeper into the Amplifica website, though, there is this press release here from January of 2023. The press release is talking about a protein called SQ3. Yeah, when was the last time anybody heard about that thing, right? I did a video on SQ3 a long, long time Time ago, and I'll link the video below, but if this is your first time hearing about it, S cube 3 is a protein that is activated by a signaling pathway that controls the hair growth cycle. That signaling pathway is actually called the sonic hedgehog pathway. I have no idea why it's called that, but I am all in favor of using video game references to name signaling pathways. But if biochemists are going to use video game references when naming positive hair growth signaling pathways, then they should do the same thing with negative hair growth signaling pathways. For example, they could call the TGF beta pathway, which destroys hair follicles, the Agent 47 pathway, since Agent 47 is a bald assassin. So clearly, he's a great personification of a pathway that assassinates your hair follicles. All kidding aside, though, I was pretty excited by the preliminary animal research on S cube 3, but I haven't heard anything new about it for over a year now, and it desperately needs a new update. So, S cube 3 is being developed by Amplifica, which is a company developed by Dr. Maxim Plikus, who is a scientist behind this research, but AMP303 is not SQ3. SQ3 is now called AMP601. So what the heck is AMP303? Is it anything like SQ3, which is now known as AMP601? All this is very confusing, but the clue is in this article here by Dr. Plikus, as well as about a million other co-authors. The article was inspired by something that many of us, maybe even yourself, may have observed at some point in your life. People who have moles often have long hairs that grow out of them. These are called hair hairy moles or hairy nevi. Dr. Plikus felt that the melanocytes in these moles were secreting a specific substance that was reactivating stem cells and thus causing the growth of new hair follicles. The study is very detailed and complicated, but basically, Dr. Plikus was able to identify two important factors that caused the hair growth that was stimulated by these melanocytes. The first factor is something called osteopontin. Osteopontin, what it is, it's a protein that is found in the bone, as you can probably guess by its name, but it's also a protein that is found in many cells throughout the body. The second factor is CD44, which is the receptor for the osteopontin protein on epithelial hair cells. The article found that, quote, osteopontin is overexpressed in human hairy nevi and it stimulates new growth of human hair follicles, unquote. So, is AMP303 basically just osteopontin? Well, fortunately, there is no need to guess here. In an interview with Dr. Plikus in Wired Magazine from last year, Dr. Plikus admits that the new drug he was starting clinical trials on, specifically AMP303, is just a proprietary version of osteopontin. So now that we know that AMP303 and osteopontin are the same things, what were the results of the study that was just completed on it? Well, we don't have a scientific publication of the results just yet, but we do have a press release from Amplifica. What this press release tells us is that the study enrolled men with androgenic alopecia with ages ranging from 18 to 45 years old. The subjects were divided into two groups. There were men with recent onset of hair loss within three to five years, and men with more long-standing hair loss lasting over 10 years. This is an unusual study design, but I do like the idea of dividing the subjects up like this, since as you chooms have heard me say many times before, the efficacy of treating hair loss is largely contingent on how early you start treatment. So the earlier you start treatment, the more efficacious the treatment will be. Anyways, each subject was acting as its own control because AMP303 was injected into one side of the scalp and a placebo was injected into the other side. The drug was injected only once and the results were evaluated over 150 days. The goals of the study were to evaluate the safety and tolerability of AMP303 as well as its efficacy. So this is what would be considered a phase one study. Unfortunately, the report doesn't bother to mention the number of subjects who were enrolled, which would have been nice to know, but oh well. Anyways, here were the key study findings. 
things. Number one, the drug was generally safe and well tolerated. There were no severe adverse effects at all, and most of the side effects were just things like skin reactions from the injections. Number two, the drug was effective, though the result is written up in a pretty confusing way. It says, quote, a statistically significant percentage of study subjects showed a greater than 15% increase in non vellus hair count from baseline compared to placebo at 60 days post-treatment, and a greater than 10% increase compared to placebo at 150 days post-treatment, unquote. Number three, remarkably, just one application of the drug had a lasting effect of almost half a year. That would mean that you could potentially get an injection just twice per year and still get hair regrowth, which makes this a remarkably practical treatment. Number four, finally, there was evidence that the treatment could transition vellus hairs into terminal hairs. And I actually talked about how that works for other hair loss treatments in my last video, and I'll link that video below in case you missed it. There are some other comments in the press release as well. Dr. William Rassman, who was a co-founder of Amplifica, noted that the results observed in the frontal temporal region of the scalp were particularly encouraging, as this could be a very tough region to treat. So, given these encouraging results, further clinical trials are currently being planned. What this all means is that Amplifica is one of the most promising companies that is currently researching hair loss treatments. They now have two potentially breakthrough hair loss remedies in the form of AMP303 and SQ3, which is now known as AMP601. They both sound very exciting to me, and whatever update we get from AMP303, I certainly hope it doesn't take as long as AMP601 has. Admittedly, the results from this AMP303 study are a little vague, so I can't make any strong conclusions just yet on how effective it is. And when you hear things like a 15% or 10% increase in non vellus hairs, that doesn't exactly sound spectacular, but at this point, it's going to be hard to determine how effective this product actually is without seeing actual hair counts. It does sound like it works though. The fact that it only has to be used twice per year makes it very convenient. So even if this treatment cannot outright replace finasteride, it still sounds like a good way to get at least some additional hair regrowth on top of whatever hair loss stack you're currently using. Also, since this treatment works through a completely unique mechanism that has nothing to do with DNA, DHT, which of course is the ultimate cause of androgenic alopecia, I think it could be stacked with other treatments very easily. I think what we're looking at here is more of a general growth stimulant like minoxidil rather than a treatment that can halt and even reverse androgenic alopecia like finasteride or dutasteride. However, I could be wrong about that and the treatment could end up being extremely potent. If these treatments can actually reactivate stem cells and grow new hair follicles, that would really be a breakthrough in the realm of hair loss research, but at this point, it's still too early to know for sure. But we do do know that the treatment is well tolerated, it's convenient, and offers a means of regrowing hair through mechanisms that are not present in any other commercially available drug. We'll just have to wait for more research before we can determine just how effective it is in actually regrowing hair, but so far I am pretty optimistic here, Chooms, so you can rest assured that I will be following this treatment very closely and I will provide an update as soon as I get my hands on more research. But until then, we've got a lot more hair loss witchery to go over in the near future, so I'll see you all again soon. Thank you so much for watching. God bless.